everyone. So today I am so, so excited because I've been in my garden. I wanted to take some more photographs for my nature photograph challenge, but I thought hmm, it'd be really nice if I could find some bugs to take photographs of. But then boop, into my emails came a video from Mrs. Partridge and she has made a bug catcher or a pooter is the other thing that she calls it. So I will now pass you over to Mrs. Partridge, who's going to show you how to make a bug catcher. Hello, it's Mrs. Partridge here again. Um, not had too much success finding many uh, animals in the garden today, so what I thought I'd do is show you how you can make your own bug hunter. I've always known them as pooters, um, and no, it's not that I can't say computer, it's a pooter. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to make it at home using some really simple things that you might well have hanging around. You will need some parental supervision for part of this but not much of it, okay? So you will need two straws, although you can use plastic tubing if you are lucky enough to have any, we're not. Um, an empty bottle, that's just a normal, how much is in that? One litre squash bottle, okay? And a bit of material, some sellotape, and I'm going to use a skewer your parents might have a braddle, but basically it's something that's got a quite a sharp point on it, or you could use a drill. I can't use ours because the battery we have just discovered it no longer charges. So I won't be using my drill. I will be using a skewer instead. Okay, so what we're going to do, the first thing we need to do with our bottle is create two holes for it. And there's gonna be one for my green straw and one for my orange straw. So I'm gonna leave you a minute while I make the hole, hopefully. Fingers crossed. You can see here, hopefully, yep, that I have just made a tiny hole there with the skewer. Um, what I now need to do is make sure that that is big enough for my straw to fit in. At the moment, it's not. This is where I'm gonna need just a little bit of persuasion, I think they call it, to make that hole bigger. So I managed to make the holes a little bit bigger and I kind of used a pencil as well to try and make them a little bit bigger. Okay, that is the part that you might need your parents for. The rest of this make is really pretty straightforward. Now with my two straws, one of them is going to be one that's going to go in your mouth. So obviously this isn't something that you're going to share. If you've got a brother or sister, you'll probably want to make your own. Um, one of them is going to be for you to suck through. And the other one is for the insect to, to shoot down, really. Okay, so you need to make sure that the one that you suck through isn't going to let the insect go into your mouth because it might be hard to get your groceries at Tesco at the moment, but I don't think any of us need to start eating insects just yet. So for that, I have this. It's just a little piece of material. It's actually off one of my dusters. It's clean. That's quite important. And what I'm going to do is attach it to the end of my straw and sellotape around there. So when I can, I can still suck through it, but I'm not gonna be able to suck an insect up into my mouth because I don't quite fancy that yet. Now I managed to attach that to the end. Now all I've got to do is insert them into the bottle. So you can see I've put the green one in already. It's now turn, I need to make sure the material part is inside the bottle. That's maybe a bit trickier than I thought it would be. Let's give it a shove with a skewer. There we go. Bob Geron, Bob Geron tea. Right, done it. It wasn't actually as difficult as I was making it out there. Okay, so now what we need to do is to make sure that these holes are airtight so that when we're sucking down this straw, none of the air, the only air is coming, is going to be sucking through there. So we need to make sure that the holes in the bottle are airtight. And to do that, I'm going to use some blue tack. You could use Play Doh, Plasticine, um, you could use even Sellotape that could well seal it, seal it. And no, Mrs. Still, this isn't from the school office. Okay, so you should have made something that looks something like, that's a bit of advertising there, hang on, that looks something like that. Now I've put a bit of sellotape around there just to make sure that my blue tack doesn't fall off. You should be able to suck down one straw and be able to feel it. If you go like that with your finger, you should be able to feel the suction. 
It's not much suction, but insects obviously are an awful lot smaller than we are. So we should still be able to go out, put this over an insect, suck down here, and it will be able to go up this here and into the bottle. And then very conveniently with the bottle, I can unscrew it and tip them out. Let's go test it. Right, okay. Best places to look for bugs are underneath things. They like to hide. So you're looking for pots in your garden that maybe you've not moved for quite a while. And hopefully we should see a collection. So let's check under this one. Oh, look, there we go. A nice collection of wood lice. So I should just pass over to my cameraman while I demonstrate. Okay, so with my trusty pooter, remembering which end I'm going to suck down and which end's gonna have the bug in it. I need to get down quite low. Oh, a bit difficult for an old woman like me. Okay, I'm gonna choose this one here. I'm going to put the green straw there. Did you see that? And hopefully my cameraman will be able to. Can you see the bug in the bottle? Yep, right there. Okay, so me and my cameraman, Oliver, are going to go around and collect some more and see what other insects we can find. Okay, and we'll come back to you later. Right, so we've just lifted up a pot and there's loads under this one. So we're going to grab a few of those, aren't we, Oliver? Oliver is doing the uh, bug collecting now with his pooter. There he is. Okay, so here's just a few we collected. These are wood lice, also known as pill bugs, because when they're scared, like this one, they curl themselves up into a little ball. They have an exoskeleton means they don't have an internal skeleton like we do their skeleton is actually on the outside so when they roll over like that it forms a protective layer and predators hopefully won't be able to eat them there comes a quite hefty one okay so we've been collecting insects for about what five minutes something like that ollie yeah about five minutes not very long we've got lots of ants we've got lots of uh, wood lice and we did have a millipede but it's miraculously disappeared so what we're gonna do we're gonna because we've got quite a few wood lice we're gonna probably collect a few more add them to our tray and then we're going to do a little experiment to see what conditions they prefer so we're gonna give one half of our tray we're gonna cover it and we're gonna make sure it's nice and damp and then the other half of our tray we're gonna leave out in the sunshine and see where the bugs go can you see from this that they like the sun more? You think they like the sun more? Okay, so on one half over there, look, we have those out in the sunshine, and then over here we put a dark cover on, and it's nice and damp over there. So, should we just uh, leave it for a little while and we'll see where they all go to, and we'll report back what we've found. Right, here we go again. Now we can see. There's a couple over there, but they're in the shade, and I think all the others have moved themselves to where it's dark and where it's damp. Right, so that's it from me for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed doing some bug hunting. I hope you've had a go yourselves. Maybe you could let us know what kind of bugs that you've been finding. Maybe you could do a graph of how many bugs you've found um, and find out which is the most common bug in your garden or wherever it is that you're taking your daily exercise. Okay, keep checking in because I will be doing some more outdoor activities over the next, well, however long we're not at school. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Wasn't that fantastic? And I'm so glad that she did find some bugs. I think I'm gonna go off and have a go at catching some bugs myself now. See which ones I can find in the garden, maybe have a look in the bushes. I may take my pooter on a walk with me in case I see any bugs up in the woods. So thank you very much to Mrs. Partridge for sharing it with me. And if you have a go at making a bug catcher or a pooter and you've caught any bugs and you have photos of them, please do send them to my email address and then I can put them 
them on the blog for everyone to see or you could take a video of it and I can put it on here a video of you catching the bugs and the bugs walking around maybe you hold the bugs maybe you left the bugs in a container so that you can show us what you found because I think that'll be really nice to see what everyone else has found and maybe there'll be different bugs in different gardens I know that I have quite a few woodlouse in my garden and a lot of super worms in my garden but I don't have very many caterpillars but you may have loads of caterpillars in your garden so I think it'll be really really interesting to see what you can catch in your pooter I think pooter is a really funny word I really like that word pooter 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 so thank you very much for watching if you do have any questions or comments please do leave them down below and I will see you really soon bye